Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today, as we see who lives here, I think. Here? You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. This apartment is supposed to be empty. Did you break in here? I'm gonna say. Excuse me? Of course not, says the locked door. Scare them. Suspected of some big crime. You have plenty of reason to enter. Are you cooking morphine in there? Oh, come on! There's a pause before you hear the door being unlocked. Well, that was easy. That was smart, the lieutenant says, nodding toward the unlocked door. I did not know this opened. Hi. Uh, what are you doing? A blister pack of medicine peeks out of the box. You should take it. I should, and I will. What is it? It's plus morale. Hypnogamma. It's actually plus three to the thing. What about this thing? Looks like a fine mattress. Don't be ridiculous. You can hear it swarming with bugs. Ha! <laughs> That's the Furies talking to each other. And we have some shoes. Black monk straps. Plus one to indirect modes of taxation. What? <laughs> what exactly? What? These Burr and Ingersoll shoes have no lacing, but a strap and a buckle. Due to their elegant and affluent design, they have been described as the, quote, most advanced, unquote, dress shoe. So advanced, in fact, that walking through slush and mud does not leave a single trace on them. They do look pretty smart. Honestly, the shoes do. Mm, let me wear them for a little... Okay, they look terrible with my current pants. Mmm, the luxury of fine things. Just look at those black monk straps. After spending an entire day hustling, who's to say that you didn't deserve a pair of ridiculously expensive shoes on your tired feet? You're right. Beautiful things do make people happy. Beautiful things give you a rush. It's power. Craft in your style, draping your flesh in silk and leather, deciding how to present yourself to the world. Remember, when they come to take it away from you, you worked for those shoes. Whether you like it or not, wearing these shoes has made you more liberal. Ultra-liberal. They're either a gateway drug or a booster pack to get you deeper into free market ideology. Hmm. It's not... It's not what, I'm ex what I was expecting. It's also not totally what, what I was expecting in regards to the conversation that we had. But it makes me think that I should perhaps wear all of the things. Kingdom of Conscience, didn't I have that conversation already? Yeah, I did. Hmm, either way. Hello, why didn't you talk? Why didn't your voice show up when we were talking outside? Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? She jingles a set of keys in her hand. Boy, there are a lot of different keys there. More than 20, at least. Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? She fumbles through her purse, fishing out a light paper-clad passport. I'm going to inspect it. It feels flimsy in hand, with the words Revachol Zone of Control written under a nondescript municipal logo. There's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. Nice haircut, and I'm gonna hand the passport back. Thank you. She slips the passport back in her purse. Do you have any questions? I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. An hour, huh? That's... That she must have just woken up or something, because it's... Yeah. What are you doing here? She sighs and looks around. I need to get it ready for the next lease, but as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. Reprehensible. Who lived here? 
It was some kind of a moribund old man who used to be a business owner. You'd think they'd make rent. She stops, hesitating. A sudden serious look crosses her face. This story didn't have a happy ending. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted or is that it? I'm in a hurry. Who lived in the foreclosed apartment down the hallway? Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We closed the apartment and planned on auctioning off the valuables, but... And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. So preppy. She's probably on some low-grade performance enhancers, like Preptide or Pericanine. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? She spreads her hands. And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. Just like that. She snaps her fingers. The sum must have been puny. It couldn't have been that much money. These apartments look pretty shabby. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. My money has also disappeared, I think. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. <laughs> so wait, what happened with the wall? Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. She's still shaking her head, manicured hands now crossed over the chest. Well, that's all. Thank you. Of course. She replies with a smile, but her eyes remain glazed over. She's been waiting for you to leave. She has, hasn't she? Well, I have solved the thing, and now I need to report back to the cleaning lady. Let's go, Kim. We're running people now. Come on. Hi. Give me a moment. I... Yeah, it's no, don't worry about it. I didn't find any counterculture people in apartment 10. It was just a real estate agent setting up the room for uh, new tenants. I see. She takes her handkerchief out and wipes her nose. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. I'm sure everything will be fine. This apartment building needs slow change. Imperceptibly slow. I was going to go with the one about radio computer wizards that are going to save the economy. But, and that's a pretty liberal attitude as well. But, uh, let's go with this one because this is the more. Well, it's not the ultra liberal. It's the, it's the, either way. Yes. Well. She doesn't know what to say, so she just coughs and repeats. <clears throat> I hope they're good people. Your statements are too vague to comment on. They're not. They're just... There's a, there's a subtext to them. It's kind of complicated. Thanks, I'm off. Do I actually have to do anything else? Find government marked heavy fuel oil. I do. I do have to. I'm glad that I came here, though. All things considered. Uh, considered. Kim, let's get out of here. We need to go... Well, I'm not going to steal your fuel oil from your car. Or motor carriage. But uh, we do need to go to your motor carriage because the because we need to make a call. Uh, it's, uh, and we need to go to Evhart. There's so many things that we need doing. And I love it. I love that we need to do these many things. And it's also the fourth day, which means, as I said before, it's the day where we're going to find somewhere. We're going to find the uh, director's cut content somewhere. I have no idea where it is. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. I'm gonna pick the radio up again. This is Precinct 57. The operator greets you through the static. How may I assist you? Uh, Alice, um, connect me to Gemrock Public Library, please. I'm afraid they're closed. It says here that the library is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Really? We should try again during business hours. Man, these people open at 10? I mean, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, public buildings, yeah, they tend to do that. Anything else, detective? N uh, 
Sure. Uh, I need to report a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. You can hear her shuffling through some papers. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? Mm-hmm. Uh, an unidentified middle-aged man. Height 170 to 175 centimeter. Dark hair, medium build. Looks like he slipped, fell through a hole in the boardwalk, and hit his head against the metal bench. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No, nope. seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. She repeats. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? Yeah, he was wearing boots, trousers, and an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. I found a uh, library card from his pockets. Any information on the library card? Yeah, it's from Central Jamrock Public Library. It belongs to someone named Billy Majin or Mejean. I I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Good. You have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? Oh yeah, we're taking the case. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Um... Not really. Um, no, I, I'm i thinking if I want to talk to Sylvie again, but no. I'm done with the, uh, the radio for now. 57, over and out. Her voice disappears into the void. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. Let me just keep seeing the set of steering levers. They're good where they are. Also, I say lever because it just sounds cooler. So, I need to wait five minutes, basically. Um, Kim. Do we want to do the thing? I think we want to do the thing. Bloody hell, we want to do the thing. I can't believe we're going to do the thing. I wonder how it's going to be. It's the second time... It's only the second time I'm going to see it. This moment in the game. And uh, the first time... It, I mean... Part, it is, it's an interesting moment. For, But not so much for my character right now, I don't think... It's different for this character. My first character was very disappointed with, with the kind of person that he was. So there's a journey. There's a journey of discovery, which is the journey of discovery that the player has as well when you're finding out who Harry Dwa is or was um, in, a, in a blind playthrough. And so the moment that we're about to see is the moment that it really dawned on me. Um, the convergence of that, of our character discovering himself and us, the player, discovering the character. A creaking ahead, a broken axle grinding. Heavy fuel oil right there. There's a broken car. A bottle drained of all its booze is frozen to the ice. 20 cents, 55 cents, they might not be called cents, the ice just off the coast crackles, shifting. Footprints in the snow, they lead away from the accident. Who crashed this car? Is what I thought when I first saw this. And that's why this really worked. The, le the hints are all there. We know who crashed this car. A 
banged up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insulindian ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and the engine remain visible. Remember the tire tracks in Martinez? This is where they were leading. Yeah, the one that we, uh, the ones that we made a visual calculus thing w with. This is where the tracks on the plaza were leading to. It appears to be so. The lieutenant has a peculiar look in his eyes as he inspects the wreckage. Let's investigate. I agree. The lieutenant replies. His eyes never leave the sunken vehicle. We should definitely investigate. You get a sudden sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. I'm gonna run my hand over the cold metal. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. A single day in the salty seawater would ruin most vehicles, but this one looks worn even in places the salt water hasn't touched it. What is the make of this MC? Can I see a logo? The logo is too deep in murky water. You can't make it out, but you do see a monkfish float by. How long has it been here? The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. He leans forward to peek into the cold water. My guess is it's been here since last Saturday or Sunday. Well, 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 looks like Jacob Iru's journey came to an abrupt end. Your mocking tone finds no response. But the motion of the waves. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't imprint a uh, a mocking tone there. Cause I. It's just. I. I. It just. It, it's. It. This is written and performed, to hit like it does. Kim. Kim's performance and his dialogue here are just peak. Peak his character, and it's just like it's brilliant. I love it, but his role in the game up to now and in here is is where is 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 where yeah did you say something lieutenant i did not he gives you a blank stare but i'd say it has been here since last saturday or sunday what should we do let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside Great idea. Then we can get the things inside. The Joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns, papers, maybe a cool jacket. A Joyrider jacket. Ah, uh, freaking Joyriders. How long will it take for the low tide to come in? I don't know. An hour or two tops? Well, let's sit on the swing and wait for the tide to recede. As you sit down in the old, rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. The hinges creak under your weight, dangerously so. Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. I'm gonna whistle a tune. The tune on your lips forms a strange, yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance, then, still looking straight ahead, he joins you with a higher pitched and slightly more melodic trill. Two birds on a wire, whistling by the seaside, looking at the water and the sunken car. The wind blows, in the distance, behind the church, some vagrants are having an argument over a bag of tear they found in the reeds. Further away, a flock of seagulls lands. The clouds pass in the sky, and the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand on a timepiece. Thirty minutes have passed. Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic for discussion. Would you rather sit on an anthill for an hour or stand in a river of leeches? Well, the lieutenant rubs his chin. Historically, leeches have been used to prevent and even cure many ailments. Clouds on the horizon grow darker and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. 
You hear the distant rumble of the city. Thirty minutes pass. Ah, man, this is taking a long time. The lieutenant looks at his wrist watch. The world turns as fast as it wants. Your voice echoes on the water, strange and out of place in the environment. Thirty more minutes pass. Can you make out the mark now? Or brand? Make? It's, it's all the same words. English says make, I think, a lot of the time. Detective, I've been able to make out the mark ever since we arrived. I find it odd that you haven't. It's a coup prix, model 40. His eyes turn to you. Yes. Why haven't you? It is a simple and rugged machine, favored by working men, government offices. He pauses to think. Firefighters, animal control people, you know, those kinds of people. I'm going to squint my eyes and say, is that a number on the side? Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? Uh, I this must be Tommy 41, the morning host of FM 41. Right. The lieutenant is looking at you peculiarly. Or oh, 41 is the number of a police precinct? Your precinct. A massive pit opens up in your stomach, and the most terrible feeling comes over you. Oh God, Harry. Oh God, Harry. What did you do? No. Just nope. Say no to this, Harry. No. No. Yes, your car is in the sea. Face it, so we can start dealing with this. No, I mean, seriously, it's just a coincidence. The lieutenant just shakes his head. Oh my god, it's mine! I drove my car into the sea? I'm afraid so, yes. It looks like you started in front of the whirling, jumped over the canal, and then drove your vehicle in the sea right here. Um, maybe um, I was in pursuit of someone. Of whom? The lieutenant looks skeptical. I don't think so. If anything, you were probably drunk. Probably. Try definitely. Uh, how, do, how do we get it out? Detective. He says, almost gently. We don't. A rescue operation really isn't viable at this point. It's sunken too deep. There is no access ramp to the coast. So, it's just, it's just gonna be the, there like that? I'm afraid it will have to be there like that for many years. He looks around. Look at it. Parts of it might be salvageable. But overall, this machine is a write-off. No, I, I can still fix it. That is very unlikely. The lieutenant replies with a sigh. All the electrics are toast. That goes for the electromagnetic steering and brake systems as well. You'd be lucky to find one undamaged component in there. He shakes his head. In a few months, there will be nothing but rust left of this vehicle. It'll be cheaper to buy a new one. Well, not cheaper. This motor carriage costs 40,000 real. But in the long run, it still makes more sense to buy a new machine than try to refurbish this. I... I couldn't even pay a hostel bill. Let's face it. This is a substantial loss to your district's budget. He's avoiding your gaze now. I mean, my station only has four other vehicles in addition to my kinema. They're, they're not going to take me back after this, are they? People are more valuable than machines. He's trying to cheer you up now. Training a police officer is even more costly. He's been trying to cheer me up since the beginning. But yeah. People, yes. But not you. Shut up, Aflight. What the hell? The, the badge. The gun. Now this? The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. Things were going so well. We were just whistling merrily. You can still whistle. The lieutenant says with a smile. Besides, the night is always darkest before the dawn. Well, uh, at least I can see what's in there now. Yes, let's go take a look. 
Yeah. On a second playthrough, and with this character, I'm very, I'm much more combative than I was <laughs> on my first playthrough. Because I'm just, I'm playing a jerk, really. Because, yeah. He drove his car into the water. So there's that. And in here we have an RCM badge, LTN-2JFR, space D-U, space B-O-I-S. And uh, I can interact it uh, with it. And also, I have an RCM commander's jacket. Wait, I'm a commander? No. What? Isn't the commander like the chief of, of a precinct? A black uniform jacket with RCM signature white rectangle on its right sleeve and backside. Letters inside the color read LTN-2JFR. The jacket is of exceptional quality, other than some minor wear and tear. And United in Black for extra esprit de corps. And that would be instead of conceptualization. And Visual Calculus adds to... Sh uh, I also get Visual Calculus because of Sharp Eye. I'll go with that. Instead of conceptualization. I'm good where I'm at. And of course we have uh, the badge. Thick blue piece of acrylic covering a thin leaf of paper with the officer's name and rank on it. Next to the writing, you see a man stare back at you, a younger version of you already disintegrating inside, but still presentable on the outside. A police badge on which you see the photo of a man, you. Some seaweed is stuck to the back. I found my badge. At least something good came out of all this. The lieutenant glances at the badge in your hands. I'm going to study the badge. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the street grid of Revachol West. You see a photo, a name, a rank, a document number, the date of issue, and in the lower right corner, your precinct. Mm-hmm. Let's look at all this in the next episode, because for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>